Hello viewers, welcome to my YouTube channel Matma. This is the fourth lecture on the series Foundation of Mathematics and in this lecture we will discuss the notion of implication. So let us see what you mean by saying implication. There is another term that is used for the implication that is called as the conditional statements. So basically it is a statement of the form we look at uh, look at startingly we, we will see one example if the apple is red then it is ripe so you can see that this is a combination of two statement and it is connected by the terms if then and those two statement in this case involved are the first one is the apple is red let me call it as s and the second one the apple is ripe and so the given same statement can be written in the way s implies t s implies t or if s then t so what does it uh, this asserts is that if ap the apple is red is a true statement then apple is ripe is a true statement that's what this implication asserts so the definition of this formal definition of this is going to be in this way you are given two statement s and t the statement of the form if s then t is called implication or it's also called as the conditional statement now the question is when is an implication false just look at this example if the bakery is open i then i will buy a cake for you if the bakery is open then I will buy a cake for you now if the bakery is not open then I am not bound to buy a cake for you by the definition itself only if the bakery is open then I have to buy a cake for you so the statement will be false only when the bakery is open and only when the bakery is open and I did not buy a cake for you and in all the other cases the statement will remain true so that's what it says that it is false only if the bakery was open and I did not buy a cake for you and in all the other cases the statement is true now to get a detailed uh, possibility for S implication to we have this truth table so when s is true and t is true s implication s implies t will remain true as it doesn't change anything it will remain false only when s is true and t is false so the s implies t will be false if s is false the conditional statement that i will buy a cake for you i'm not bound to buy a cake for you so even if this is true the statement will true and if it is false the statement will false and in a nutshell the negation of the statement if s then t would be s and not t the bakery is open and i did not buy a cake for you but i did not but can be replaced by and in this context so the negation is s and not t see some example if apple is red then it is ripe so what is going to be its negation if the apple is red then it is ripe so negation will be the apple is red but it is not ripe so the apple is red and it is not ripe let me take one example which is closer to mathematics if x is in z then x is in r now see this should be true that means if if this is true then this has to be true if this is false then you know the, uh, that is if x is in z if th this is true then x belongs to r have to be true but if x belongs to z is not true then x belongs to r x can be anywhere so that may or may not be true so the statement will be false only if x is in z but x is not in r now there are uh, many ways of exp expressing the statement involving implication 
if s then t is same as saying t if s it is also same as saying s implies t or uh, mathematically it, in, it, it is denoted by this arrow s implies t s only if t t is necessary for s and the last phase s is sufficient for t and so let us uh, see some uh, see this example uh, in this six phase how it can be written in this way if the student is good in mathematics then he is humble so this is of the form if s then t where s is student is good in mathematics and t is student is humble so these are the two statement that are used over here then this can be written as the student is humble if he is good in mathematics so this is of the form t if s and the student is good in mathematics implies that he is the humble so this would be the simplest way of writing if s then t s only if t so the student is good in mathematics only if he is humble this also conveys the same meaning as if the student is good in mathematics then he is humble t is necessary for s so how would you write in this case to be humble is necessary for the student to be good in mathematics and last one s is sufficient for t so this can be written as the student being good in mathematics is sufficient to conclude that he is humble so these are the six way of uh, convey of writing or of expressing the statement with implication now the converse so as you know that there are two statements in wall if s then t in the implication so s and t are the two statement involved so if i interchange the role of s and t uh, we get the converse of the statement let us look at the example if the apple is red then it is ripe i just interchange this two statement if the apple is ripe then it is ripe then it is red okay both the statements are uh, are the reverse statement of each other and they are called as the contrapositive of uh, sorry the converse of each other so they are of the form if s then t and if t then s respectively each of the two statements are said to be converse of the other so we have the definition for that so if you have a statement s in the form if p then q then the statement if q then p is called a converse of s so till now i have not said anything about this two statement these are only uh, the framing if this is the first statement then its converse is this statement or if this is the statement then its converse is the first statement when this is true i cannot say whether this is true or false or when this is the second one is false i cannot say whether the first one is true or false okay so this is just a definition of converse of the statement if the mobile handset has a camera then it is expensive the same statement asserts that the camera the mobile cannot have a camera if it is not an expensive okay but its converse is that is if the mobile handset is expensive then it has a camera this asserts that mobile cannot be expensive if it do not have a camera so this two statement convey the different meaning similarly the boy is rich if he owns a bmw car and the boy owns a bmw car if he is rich these two are converse of each other now the statement comes if and only if now if and only if are the statement are the conjunction of both the statement the statement and its converse okay so the statement with the implication and its converse so if the student is sincere then he is humble and its converse is that if the student is humble then he is sincere so these are the converse of each other now the same thing can be written as the the student is humble if he is sincere and the student is hum humble only if he is sincere so both these statements again the converse of each other so their conjun conjunction is written as the student is humble if and only if he is sincere conjunction meanings uh, the student is humble if he is sincere and the student is humble only if he is sincere so the two these two statements that is the statement and its converse are connected by the connective and 
so we can say that uh, the statement s if and only if t is a conjunction of two statements namely the first one is only if part or it is also called as the necessary part or implied uh, implication part so that's s only if t or if s then t and that's called as a necessary because uh, t is necessary for uh, s in that case the second part is the sufficient part it is if part or implied by part it says s if t since it means t is sufficient for s so conjunction of both this part that is s implies t and t implies s or s is implied by t is called if and only if statement now that's also denoted by the notion if i double f so if and only if is uh, also equivalent to i f f if so for two statement s and t the conjunction of the implication if s then t and its converse if t then s is written as s if and only if t s if and only if t can also be expressed in the following ways s is necessary and sufficient condition for t s implies by t and s is implied by s implies t and s is implied by t that's the second one so both this conveys the same meaning most of the time uh, this is also called as s if i double f t and that same as saying s is necessary and sufficient condition for t uh, let's have a ex uh, example let's have a look of an example a positive integer p is a prime if the only positive divisors of p are 1 and p now what does this statement say is that if you have a p which is greater than 1 and 1 and p are the only positive divisors of p then p is a prime so basically this is a definition of a prime number and if p is a prime what will happen then obviously it is the number which is greater than 1 and it has only positive divisors uh, the, the only positive divisors of p are 1 and p okay so this becomes if and only if statement and in fact any definition in mathematics become if and only if statement so the same statement can be written as p is prime if and only if only positive divisor of p are 1 and p so that's a remark every definition in mathematics is an if and only if statement so we always need to uh, know this negation of implication using quantifiers now more often we have a statement of the form for all x in x for all x coming from some set if x has a property p then x has a property q so how would we negate this kind of statement first of all we can convert this kind of statement into the statement of the form for all x in a set of context x has a property p so how to get that set of context from here it's very simple see what i'll do is that i'll collect the elements of x such that x has a property p and that i'll uh, consider as a set of context in this case so for every element in that particular set what will happen it's an element from x it's, it's basically a subset of x having the property um, having the elements of who's having the property p so any element belonging to that set will be an element from x and it will have the property p so uh, then the property for that set will be this x has a, a y has a property q so it can be written in this way this is what i was talking about the set of context i am taking as this set of all x in x such that x has a property p and so this serves as a uh, property uh, says that every element of this set uh, satisfy okay so the same statement can be written as i just change the notation because x is already used inside so for all y in this set of context y has a property q so basically it means the same thing now it is very easy to negate such kind of statement how would you negate this there exists y in this set of context such that y does do not have a property q now what is this set of context it's a set of all element in x such that x has property p so that means i can write down the same statement as there exists x in x such that 
x has a property p but x does not have a property q so we have this okay so the negation using quantifier first we have this which is same as writing there exists x in x such that x has a property p and x does not have a property q so that but can be replaced by and in this context because it conveys the same meaning similarly the statement of the form there exists x in x such that if x has a property p then x has a property q how would you convert this into a statement uh, with only one quantifier and set of context and property and then so it will be easy for us to negate this very simple again you derive uh, you construct a set of element of x having the property p that would serve as a set of context so i can write down this as if y belongs to this set of context x belonging x in x is that x has a property p this is basically a subset of x such that y has a property q what will be the negation of this given any y from this set y will not have the property q so that is same as writing not of s for every y in this set of context y do not have a property q but what is set of context it's a set of all element in x such that x has a property p so the same thing can be written as for all x in x such that x has a property p but x do not have a property q so i convert again the statement into the similar form uh, by taking the meaning from this so what does this basically means for every x in x whenever x has a property p x does not have a property q okay next is the contrapositive of implication suppose if the mango is red then it is ripe is a true statement if this is a true statement now the question is if the mango is not ripe will it be a red definitely not and that's what is called as the contrapositive of the given statement which is equivalent to the uh, implication okay so contrapositive is again formed from the implication itself so this is of the form if s then t okay so where s is mango the mango is red and t is the mango is ripe so if the mango is not ripe then it is not red is a true statement okay so this and this are uh, equivalent statement so in other word each of these two two statement is true if and only if the other is true in a nutshell if s then t is equivalent to its contrapositive if not t then not s and so this is a very very useful uh, result that we have because it can be used uh, to prove a statement of the form if s then t sometime going from a point s to t is very difficult so we use this fact we we go in a reverse way not t to not s and that's called as proving the result by contrapositive uh, here we have an example for an integer x if x square minus 6x plus 5 is even then x is odd so very equivalent statement very equivalent statement to this would be see first of all you should be able to first this is an implication if s where s is x square minus 6x plus 5 is even then uh, t would be x is odd so this will remain same for an integer x the contrapositive will be if x is not odd that is if x is even then x square minus 6x plus 5 is not even that is x square minus 6x plus 5 is odd same way if a function f from r to r is differentiable at a point c then it is continuous at c so its contrapositive will be if the function f is not continuous at c then the function is not differentiable at c very very basic result in mathematics so that's end of this uh, today's lecture uh, thank you so much for watching this video and have a nice day ahead